سورہ بخرا آیت نمبر 120 اللہ سیڈ او پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا اہل کتاب ویل نیور بی سیٹسفائیڈ وتھ یو انلیس دے ٹرن یو اوے فرام یور دین اینڈ ایون اف یو ٹرن اوے فرام یور دین دے ویل سٹل ناٹ بی سیٹسفائیڈ وتھ یو اینڈ دا تفسیر فار دس ایت از اللہ ہیز کلیئرلی ڈکلیئرڈ دا انٹینشنز اف دا انٹائر مشن اینڈ لائف اف دا اہل کتاب that their intention and life and the purpose of their life is to turn you away from your deen and if you don't turn away those people from their deen to come to Islam they will surely turn you away in different aspects of your life the only thing that will remain with you is your lip service of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in the entire part of your life you will be like them you will be absolutely better than them better than them? in what? in not practicing Islam and Allah is enough as a witness for this as a guardian of this promise he will make Islam prevail over everything the only thing that remains now is either you work for Islam or you work against Islam remember this there is nothing called neutrality either you work for Islam or you work against Islam you know why? in the entire Quran when Allah speaks about sabr he is not talking about the sabr that you make when you don't get jobs, your daughters don't get married, you don't get married, you don't get a visa. It's not that sabr Allah speaks in Quran and this. It's about when you work for Islam and then you are put into trouble and then you are patient and persevering and invite others to patient. That is a sabr in Quran and this. I cannot say this is my body, my rule. You cannot say I am free to do anything. No, you are not free to do anything. If you say you are a Muslim, you are a slave. You are a slave. You are not the boss of your own life. You are the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A correct knowledge without practice is pride and arrogance. Correct actions without knowledge is foolishness and ignorance. I said in Surah Baqarah at number 185, that the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan and the purpose of the Quran was not merely thawab it was not meant with the purpose that a person should meaninglessly keep reciting it and for every letter of the Quran he shall keep earning 10 rewards irrespective whether the person acts upon the commands of Allah or does not act this was not the purpose of the Quran as a majority of the readers of the Quran today have taken it to be but rather it was a message to guide all of us in every moment of our life to guide us in the matters of economy in the matters of family life in the matters of how a society shall be in the matters of worship in the matters of the remembrance that every human life that has been created is accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on day of judgment and when you stand up on day of judgment either you stand up because that is your real home that is Darus Salaam either you will stand in front of Allah with satisfaction or you will stand with utter dissatisfaction and the one who is dissatisfied on that day he is destroyed she is destroyed Allah <coughs> Akbar Allah الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة 
Hayyal al-Salah Hayyal al-Falah Hayyal al-Falah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليك ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدساتها وكل مهدسة بدعة وكل بدعة زلالة وكل زلالة في النار أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد في سورة الأنبياء اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اخترب للناس حسابهم وهم فی غفلت معرضون اما بعد ربش رح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لخدت من لسانی یفہ خولی I welcome all my dear brothers and the sisters with the Islamic greetings السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو میننگ می دا پیس مرسی اور بیسنگز آف اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی بی آن آل آف یو حمدللہ دس از دا فرسٹ جمعہ آفٹر عید الفطر آف دا یئر 2024 کرسٹین ایرہ اور 1445 ہجری آئی وڈ لائک ٹو گریٹ آل آف یو عید الفطر مبارک تقبل اللہ منہ و منکم می اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ایکسپٹ آل دا گوڈ ڈیٹس فرم اس اور فرم آل آف یو اس رمضان واز دا منت ان وچ اللہ سید ان سورہ بقرہ آیت نمبر 185 that the قرآن was revealed in the month of رمضان and the purpose of the قرآن was not merely ثواب it was not meant with the purpose that a person should meaninglessly keep reciting it and for every letter of the Quran he shall keep earning 10 rewards irrespective whether the person acts upon the commands of Allah or does not act this was not the purpose of the Quran as a majority of the readers of the Quran today have taken it to be but rather it was a message to guide all of us in every moment of our life to guide us in the matters of economy in the matters of family life in the matters of how a society shall be in the matters of worship in the matters of the remembrance that every human life that has been created is accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on day of judgment for everything he blessed the human life with. Forgetting all this, if I continue to persist in my daily routine life without giving a serious thought to the very purpose of life that Allah Rabbul Alameen mentioned in Surah Zariyat Surah number 51, Ayat number 56 where Allah said we have certainly not created the men and the jinn except that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the very purpose of your creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Allah is not the five times daily prayers, the psalm, the zakat, the hajj, 
that we have taken to be limited in our lacune of knowledge as ibadat but rather ibadat of allah is from the time you wake up and get out of your bed not by your choice but the time to wake up as decided by allah in fajr and then continue your whole day the whole routine of life till you retire to the bed and again when you lie on the bed not by your choice but as muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed you to lie down in a certain posture remembering allah even before sleep and if i do not understand this very sense and the essence of islam then truly i am of those muslims who received many ramazans in my life but have not pleased allah or rather not understood the real purpose of every year a ramazan coming in my life to remind me for the remaining 11 months what i have to do with ramazan leaving us a muslim shall be more worried his istighfar shall increase more because it was during ramazan that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the gates of hell are closed the gates of heaven are opened maghfirah of allah rahmat of allah increases multiple times compared to the remaining 11 months but now that ramazan is gone the shayateen the satans they are again open into the market the doors of hell are open it is not the same <coughs> condition of rahmat and maghfirat of allah subhanahu wa taala as it was in the holy month of ramazan so therefore i shall fear allah more i shall concentrate more to practice islam than becoming complacent that let me see when the next ramazan comes in my life and we never know whether you ever get the next ramazan in your life or not there were many people who may have lived with us in the last years of ramazan but they were not with us in this ramazan there were many who may have lived with us even till the first ramazan of 2024 christian era of this year started but they were not there when the first ramazan started and we were those fortunate enough people to have still survived throughout ramazan and are still surviving after ramazan let us take to ourselves a reminder today and i would like to remind all of you with a beautiful surah of the quran that according to imam shafi rahimahullah he said that it is an ihsan of allah subhanahu wa taala that he revealed an entire quran with 114 surahs beginning from surah fatiha to surah an-nas but otherwise had allah revealed only one surah that is surah number 103 of the quran and of the three surahs that we have in the quran of the 114 surahs there are at least three surahs in the quran that have only three ayat surah al-asr surah al-kawsar and surah an-nasr and of these three surahs to have only three ayat the first one of them is surah al-asr surah number 103 of the quran and imam shafi said that only this surah was enough to guide entire humanity and this surah it begins with an oath taken by allah subhanahu wa taala and we all know our nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam if he speaks something he will never speak anything except truth and that quality of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in him even before he became the prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala he was entitled as sadiq what does a sadiq mean the most truthful who would not speak lies even for the sake of humor for the sake of joking he would never speak a lie that is a sadiq and if rasul e pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam if nabi e kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks something to us there is only a full stop after that there is no comma there is no semicolon there is no colon there is no exclamation it's only a full stop that is how truthfully he speaks 
and our Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam need not take an oath for anything because he is not like any one of us from whom it can be expected that this person may be speaking a lie. But imagine if the rub of Rasulullah Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taking an oath, how serious is the issue now? Does Allah need to take an oath for anything? Sadaq Allahu Nazim. Everything that Allah speaks is nothing but perfect truth. But there are so many occasions in the Quran where Allah Himself took an oath. And the reason? One, because in the Arab culture, whenever they wanted to speak anything important, they would take oaths. And the Quran was revealed to the people, the first audience were those Arabs. And according to their language, Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14, Ayat number 4, my Prophet does not speak, the, we sent Prophets speaking in their mother tongue, in their language that they understand. And the other reason is to warn mankind, remember your Lord is taking an oath and whatever he is going to speak after the oath shall be listened and followed very carefully. And according to the Mufassiri and the Ulema and the Sahaba and the Aima of the greatest oaths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken in the Quran, one of them is Suratul Asr, Wal Asr. And what is Asr? Asr is most often translated as by the token of time. But then the time is of 24 hours in a day. So the scholars say, Asr was referred by the Arabs as the entire day. But then in the day of the five Salah that we make, that we have been obligated in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, at number 130, the five different timings of the Salah, one of them is Salatul Asr. And why is that Salah called Salatul Asr? So, our eminent scholars, they explained the innocent and the ignorant of this Ummah that you understand that when it is Fajr, you wake up for the Fajr and then the time after that, you start taking your bath, bathing yourself, clothing yourself, walking out with complete energy, prime energy, prime time. With prime effort, you walk out of your homes to search for your earning, to complete your routine of life. And when it is Salatul Asr, you are psychologically programmed that the day is coming towards an end. It is about to collapse now and the night will overtake. The darkness will overtake. You are psychologically programmed to wind up the routine of your day to complete your tasks because it is time for you to return to your homes to return to your families and when you return to the families you return in two conditions satisfied or dissatisfied you return with satisfaction fulfilling the tasks you return with dissatisfaction because what you wanted to achieve you were unable to achieve throughout the day and when Allah said Walasr, He meant to point out to the mankind that the dawn of mankind which began at the time of Adam is coming towards collapse. It is coming towards the end. As Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, lifted his two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger. He kept them attached and he showed to the Sahaba and he said, Oh Sahaba, do you see this? The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, we of course see it. The Prophet said, This is me and this is Khiyama. There is nothing between us after this. The only thing my Ummah will meet next as the greatest thing that will occur in this universe is the Day of Judgment. There is no Ummah that will come after me. There is no Nabi that will come after me. Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33, Ayat number 40, He is the seal of the Prophets. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final prophet. No Nabi, no Rasul after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That would mean no Ummat after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So the only thing this Ummah needs to understand is human life that began at the time of Adam is coming towards a collapse. And when you stand up on Day of Judgment, either you stand up because that is your real home. That is Darul Salaam. Either you will stand in front of Allah with satisfaction or you will stand with utter dissatisfaction. And the one who is dissatisfied on that day, he is destroyed. She is destroyed. And Allah took the oath. Wala sir. By the time, by the token of time, by asr. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next statement, in the next part of that statement, he describes the very nature of human beings. He describes the nature. He says the nature of human is innal insana. Most certainly insan. Most certainly the human beings. Whether Muslims or non-Muslims. Every son of Adam. Every daughter of Adam. Innal insana lafi khusr. Are bound to perish in destruction. And it is khasara. Lafi khusr. Khusr is from khasara in Arabic. There is a huge difference between nuksan and khasara. Even nuksan is an Arabic word. A loss which is irrecoverable is called khasara in Arabic. And what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Allah is taking an oath. Allah says, I swear by the time. And what is time? Time has three dimensions. If I, for a moment, keep aside Einstein's theory of relativity, time has three dimensions. The past, the present, and the future. The past of human beings, it begins from Adam alayhi salam. The present is the time I am living in. And the future is going to be the time when the trumpet of the Qiyamah is blown and all of us are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a line. By the time, most certainly, mankind is in an utter perishing loss. But Allah is ready to save. Save human beings from that loss. So he says, I put to you four prescriptions. I prescribe four medicines in your life. When you leave in it, you are bound to perish. The doctor prescribes to you four medicines. He says four is your medicine. You will have to take these four medicines. And you go to the doctor taking only three, saying still I am sick. The doctor says, I told you four, why did you take three? And Allah is giving us four medicines. amanu. The only people who will not perish are the people who believe. And amanu here, according to the tafsir done by Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, he says amanu here is the knowledge of Islam you acquire. It is not merely saying la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It is the knowledge of la ilaha illallah. Allah said in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Surah number 47. Allah said, Then acquire knowledge, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that there is no Allah, there is no God except Allah. <coughs> Can you imagine? Allah is asking Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to acquire ilm, to acquire knowledge that there is no God but Allah. So this la ilaha illallah is a not blindfold key that has been given into the hand of a Muslim to do whatever he wants to do in his life or in her life and just use this key to open the gates of Jannah. No. Illa ladina amanu Except those who acquire the knowledge of Iman. And what is Ayatul Bir? Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayat number 177. In the context of Ayat number 143 of Surah Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to change the direction of the Qibla from Baytul Muqaddas to Makkatul Mukarramah, the Jews and the Christians of the time, the hypocrites of the time, they were taunting the Sahaba and continuously telling the Sahaba, what kind of a messenger is this? What kind of a prophet is this? What kind of Allah is this? You are praying in this direction, he changed your direction. So what about the Salah you made earlier? So Allah in ayat number 177 he said Lan bil Allah said it is not important whether you face your directions to the east or the west 
ولكن البر the actual righteousness is من آمر بالله who amongst you truly believe in Allah واليوم الآخر in the last day وملائكته and his angels وكتبه and his books ورسوله and his messengers what does it mean all the superficial things for which you ummah is fighting with each other creating divisions amongst each other that is not very important in the sight of Allah what is more important is how much did you learn about Allah and practiced Islam inna insana lafi khusr illa lazina amanu so Imam Bukhari says Iman here, Amanu here it means the knowledge about the articles of belief in Islam the true knowledge and there is a popular saying a correct knowledge without practice is pride and arrogance correct actions without knowledge is foolishness and ignorance you are doing good things but you don't know why are you doing it who told you to do it how did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do it how did the sahaba do it you are doing it because you just heard the people saying that this you have to do but you never took the interest to do it so this is hypocrisy in Islam the time does not permit me to go in detail except for a popular hadith that we may have heard many times when you are put in the grave when Munkir and Nakir approach you they ask you man rabbu ka ma dinu ka man haza or man rasulu ka who is your lord what is your religion what is your deen and who is this or who is Muhammad who is your rasul and there are two popular answers that we know of either a person will say rabbun Allah Allah is my rabb deen is islam and my religion is islam Muhammad rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is my messenger alhamdulillah these are mubineen the other one they don't reply and Allah says these are kafirin that is believers have you ever heard about the third the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there will be a third category of people who will say we heard the people Allah is our lord we believed in that we heard the people that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our messenger we believed in it we heard the people that deen Islam is our deen and we believed in it and the messenger said a voice will call from the heavens to the angels and say lay down under them a bed of fire from the hell and let them lie upon it for they are liars and do you know what is the tashri done by muhaddisin imam tirmizi rahimahullah himself for this hadith he said this is because these were those muslim believers who believed in Islam but they never learned Islam in their own life by themselves and the hadith concludes these are the hypocrites of my ummah these are the munafiqin of my ummah Allahu Akbar and what is Allah saying by the token of time entire mankind by nature is to perish their nature is to perish themselves destroy themselves except those who believe meaning who learn the right knowledge about the articles of faith do good deeds according to what has been commanded not what they feel is good not what makes them easy to do good everything that has been commanded they have to do it you have no choice I cannot say this is my body my rule you cannot say I am free to do anything no you are not free to do anything if you say you are a Muslim you are a slave you are a slave you are not the boss of your own life you are the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a slave has no luxuries a slave cannot demand he only has to follow and obey that's all do or die don't ask why that's the thumb rule for a slave do or die don't ask why and then Allah says what is haq Allah said in surah Tawbah surah number 9 ayat number 33 surah Saf surah number 61 ayat number 9 Allah said huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda it is he who sent a rasool with hidayat and what is the hidayat shahru ramadhan alladhi unzila fihi al quran huda lil nas the hidayat was the quran and many muslims today we say oh if Allah gives the hidayat I will do it you want another quran for you now 
What do you mean? What hidayat do you need? Allah has already given you the Quran and that is the hidayat for you. That is what you have been reading throughout Ramadan. It's the hidayat. It is He who has sent a messenger with hidayat, with the Quran. Waddeen al And He has sent the messenger with the deen of haq. And what is the tafsir for deen al haq? The sunnah of Muhammad is the deen al haq. And the purpose to send? I will make the sunnah of Muhammad of this deen of entire life that the Prophet practiced precede over every other system of life, every other economy system, political system, social system, family system, anything that you talk of, I will, it's a promise of Allah. I will make this deen il haq precede over it. Even if the mushrik dislike it, and in Surah Fatah, Surah number 48, ayat number 28, instead of Walau Kariya al Mushrikun, Allah said, Wakafa billahi wakila. And Allah is enough as a witness for this, as a guardian of this promise. He will make Islam prevail over everything. The only thing that remains now is either you work for Islam or you work against Islam. Remember this. There is nothing called neutrality. Either you work for Islam or you work against Islam. You know why? Surah Baqarah, number 120, Allah said, O Prophet وسلم, the Ahmed Kitab will never be satisfied with you unless they turn you away from your deen. And even if you turn away from your deen, they will still not be satisfied with you. And the tafsir for this ayat is, Allah has clearly declared the intentions of the entire mission and life of the Ahl Kitab that their intention and life and the purpose of their life is to turn you away from your deen. And if you don't turn away those people from their deen to come to Islam, they will surely turn you away. In different aspects of your life, the only thing that will remain with you is your lip service of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. In the entire part of your life, you will be like them. You will be absolutely better than them. Better than them? In what? In not practicing Islam. Vatawasu bilhaq. Establish yourself in, on truth and invite others to that truth. Vatawasu sabr. With the whole ummah for sabr. Here the ayat they have made the tafsir is, Oh, trouble comes to you in your life, be your sabr. No, this is not the meaning of sabr there. In the entire Quran, when Allah speaks about sabr, He is not talking about the sabr that you make when you don't get jobs, your daughters don't get married, you don't get married, you don't get a visa. It's not that sabr Allah speaks in Quran and this. It's about when you work for Islam and then you are put into trouble and then you are patient and persevering and invite others to patient. That is a sabr in Quran and this. Otherwise, the sabr that we have defined, the same sabr even the disbelievers are doing. What is the difference? They are doing much better than us. That's not the sabr. And finally, I would like to end this khutbah with Surah Ambiya, Surah number 21, Ayat number 1. Ikhtaraba lil nasi hisabuhum. Very close to mankind has come the time of them giving their accounts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, these people are denying this very fact that they have come close to the time of giving accountability to Allah and they are happy celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries like fools. I'm very sorry to use that word. But you know why I use it? Because every year when you celebrate, you are actually celebrating that I have come one year closer to death to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is pure ignorance. Instead of worrying, we are celebrating. Allahu Akbar. I am really sorry for that. Forgive me for that if I have outspoken anything. But it's out of love and affection for my Muslim brothers and sisters whose part I am in faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand Islam like he explained and made Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam understand and practice Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Rabbana la tuzikhulubana baada izhadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab. 
ربي دلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا غفر لي ولي والدي ولي المؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to your life my heart i'm grateful for your mercy